Hey, what's up, folks? Let everybody get kind of on here. And then, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have a little bit of fun today. We're going to talk a little bit about K-State and how the game went, because, you know, we go to those games. And then we're going to talk about some snakes, show you some snakes, show you how some things are doing. Ah, uh, so let me find the spot where I want this at. What's going on, y'all? Tell you what, it might be best if I just... Will that hold up? Maybe. Whoa! There we are. Ah! Hey, I like that. That's gonna work. So, let's talk a little bit of football first, huh? Yeah, I don't know, some of you get to some snakes too. What's going on, everybody? But, as a lot of you know, we are located in Manhattan, Kansas, which also makes us uh, huge K-State fans. With that, with that, ugh, we tend to attend a lot of games, right? What's up from West Virginia? I bet you all are going to be uh, happier than we are going to be today. So let's get right down to it. Uh, K-State game versus uh, Mississippi State. Yeah. How are they doing? Quentin, they doing pretty good? You know, we got them in two weeks. That will be our opening Big 12 game as the Mountaineers. I'm really excited about that game. Uh, hello... Mountaineers are a damn good, uh, damn good football team. For now, <laughs> well, I should be watching it, but I I'm just footballed out for the day. So I might have to go check it out here in a bit and see what's going on. Let me put this table down. I think I'm going to move you all down here. It's easier for me to read comments. Uh, we are still a reptile show, so don't worry about that. For those of you who are thinking, well, we're talking sports. We won't always talk sports, but I figure... We can do a little bit of uh, different things on here, right? So, it's on your wedding day. Well, first of all, congratulations. And yeah, you probably will miss that one. You know, that's that's a that's an acceptable reason, I think, to miss that game, though. There is not many reasons to miss it. But in this game, I'll tell you what, you know, we went to the first K-State game, and uh, man... We won that first game, but the team came out really flat. Just didn't look like what you'd expect a Bill Snyder team to look like. Had penalties. I mean, overall, just kind of lackadaisical. And, and I don't want to say lackadaisical. That's not really an accurate description in week one. But in week one, it was more of a it's a lot of mental errors. You know, we had, we had three fumbles from a player that never fumbles the ball, really. Uh, and then we kind of... Got it going from Zuber on special teams. That kind of sparked everything. We came back, got the win. Nice game. Shouldn't have been that close. Well, today we played Mississippi State. And let me tell you, man, uh, of course I'm a Big 12 guy, not an SEC guy, SEC guy, but that team's legit. I mean, their quarterback is massive. And we just could not stop the quarterback run game. Uh, and I, I thought our defense, despite giving the points that we gave up, played pretty well. Uh, you know, I hope my Vikings will be good. We'll find that out tomorrow. But uh, just their, their, their running back and quarterback combo just pummeled us. Uh, you know, last year we were weak against the pass. We were great against the pass tonight. And last week Duke Shelley played really, really well both games. So... We'll see. I mean, I don't think we're going to play any teams in the Big 12 that have a quarterback that can run the way Mississippi State's quarterback can. And for all you SEC fans out there, let me tell you, when you run into those guys, man, pack a lunch because that guy is a house. He just, I mean, all the yards after first contact, as long as that guy's healthy, that is a scary, scary football team. And their defense played pretty well, too. Offensively, it was hard to tell if Mississippi State's defense played really good. Or if we just, you know, uh, couldn't get a rhythm really going. Like, we just couldn't sustain anything. and we, It's almost like, and we have new coordinators, I almost feel like we're looking for our offensive identity and we're kind of a little lost right now. If they get that, we'll probably be okay. If we don't, it's going to be a long season. So, that is kind of <laughs> hail state, hell yeah. So that is kind of... Uh, Bought your first house? What do you mean you bought our first house? Bought my first old house? Hmm? 
It, it is. Well, it wasn't yards after catch. Like, man, they didn't throw for shit on us. Like, we shut them down in the passing game pretty well. It was yards after that first contact. Man, we would we would hit that dude, and he would just keep going. I mean, it reminded me of watching Dante Culpepper in his heyday just as a quarterback who could run. Uh, Bill Snyder had compared him to, to Colin Klein, and I think that was a, a very accurate comparison as well. I mean, you know, he had just enough arm to make you respect it, and... Damn, man, that guy could run. So that was that. You know, we just got to get get it cranked up earlier and get an offensive rhythm earlier and not put so much pressure on our defense. The thing is, I think the talent's there. I really like Isaiah Zuber. That guy is so fast. He was open three or four times and nobody saw him. We were getting a little too much pressure, and I'm not sure why that is if we're getting in the right line calls or not seeing the blitz. But uh, the offensive line should be should be able to fix that, I think. So I, I still have hope for K-State, even after today was a, kind of a disaster. Maybe I'm just a little too positive. But I think we can pull something out, still make some noise in the Big 12. You know, uh, I don't know about Oklahoma. When it comes time to play those guys, we're going to have a lot of things go right, especially playing them there. But, you know. Well, but see, the thing is, Cole, on that game... The way we played, we should have lost to South Dakota. You know, we should have because of the way we played. But you look at the game, and if you watch that team a lot, that's not typical. And what I can say is today, even though we ran into a buzzsaw of a team that, that really, I mean, they brought it to us. you got to give them credit where it's due. And South Dakota, South Dakota was in that game because of our own mistakes, and we allowed them to be in that game. We allowed them to hang around. We made stupid errors. You know, we just... We, we just, we put them in that game. You play that game 50 times and it shouldn't even be like that, you know? Uh, but this game, I mean, we made we made some errors, don't get me wrong. But I don't know if it would have made a huge difference how we played a little cleaner. And the penalties, we cleaned up the penalties, that was great. But they just brought it to us. Like, you know, I'll admit when a team brings it to us and... Mississippi State brought it to us, and we just, we didn't have the tools to contend with that running back and uh, combo. So, there we are. We're not talking about the NFL, Tony. This is college. And we will bring on snakes. We get some snake questions. There are a few things I want to show you guys what's going on. But uh, I did want to talk about some football, because everybody loves football. At least a lot of us do. What about North Dakota State University? I haven't seen them this year, but they they came in and beat us once, and they've done that to a lot of Power 5 conference teams, man. That is a team that if you're in a Power 5 conference, you just, fuck, you really shouldn't sign, you know? Because uh, you sign them to play, they're going to they're gonna bring, they're gonna bring a game. But the year they did beat us, we actually wanted to have a very good season, if memory serves. So It's not always the end of the world, these early games. I'm more worried about the Big 12. And I was hoping K-State would win, too, obviously. But uh, the good news is the weather was great for tailgating. And, uh, yeah, so not all is lost. All right. So now that we're all kind of here, we what am I drinking? Why, are you ready for this? I'm drinking off-brand Coca-Cola from Dillon's. <laughs> we're going to go out to dinner tonight. Now it's up till 2 in the morning feeding last night. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really want to go too crazy on that late games maybe i'll drink a little more beer and then you'll have a different reaction but we may start doing something on saturdays after a game where if i have time i might hop on talk a little football and then talk a little snakes just to bring some more uh, i don't know connection and humanity to the channel right some shared experience for those of us that love k-state and for those of you that hate k-state you can just give me shit and no, I am not going to our NARBC in October. If we go to any show in October, okay, it will be Denver. And we are working very diligently and very hard to try to make it to Denver and get that going. Now, I will not have any or very many of my snakes in Denver, but I may be selling for somebody else in Denver on contract. For those of you that are on a Patreon page, though, that get the, the discount shows, he has agreed that if we're able to make that work, he will honor that discount. So, uh, you will get that discount on those snakes that we take to the show, too. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't do that for just anybody. It's definitely a business I trust if we can make it happen. It's a business I buy from. So, I mean, I'm not taking... I know the animals I'm taking. 
are going to be high quality. And it'll ha won't be under my name. It'll be kind of a combination names. So we'll have a lot of our stuff there, a lot of our name there, and a lot of their name there too to represent. Why are we doing that? Well, we've sold out. And we've got a few things that may come available now. But uh, it's just... We're not ever going to have very many this year, I don't think, to take to, to shows and run shows on our own. Because we just... And it's not because we're not hatching. I and mean, you guys see, we're, we're hatching. They're just selling. So uh, we got a few things coming up that may hit public. We may take with us, may not. We'll see. We'll see what all sells first. So that's why. But help show them you. Yeah. And that... I mean, we got to get out to shows, you know. Like, the last show I went to, I lost money. I didn't really lose money. I just spent money. And um, the thing was, you know, shows are great. And if you guys watched the live show video, I had a lot of fun doing that. I probably shouldn't have went on the swearing tangent. I did, but I did. And uh, although that's just kind of me. And we'll probably do more filming at shows. Plus, I want to be able to get out there and meet people. So, yes, that's what we're working on. And do I ship snakes to the UK? I don't currently. Uh, not saying we never will, but currently we just don't have the ability to do that. Well, somebody did ask to see a snake, so let me flip this camera around. Mm -hmm. And let's look at some snakes. So we'll just show you how a few things are doing. These will be things that will either uh, may not be ready this year, but will definitely be ready for next year. <laughs> Didn't lose it with those two additions to the collection. No, those two additions were definitely worthwhile additions. But, you know, when you look at it from a business standpoint, we spent more than we made for sure. So there is one of the bells, and you can see she is doing really good. Oh, that's nice. I love being loved. And not having this enough stock, it's only a problem if it's because you're not producing stock. This is the other of the two bells. This is the one that tried to pop me the other day when we were doing a video. You can see she's looking really good. So we have both of those going. You know, what we found is that uh, on this feed time, this is something else I want to share with you guys. Actually, I can't film feeds. I get, I get in trouble for it. But we're kind of at that point in our feed season where our females are pounding food. And our males kind of like starting to turn their nose up at it. Which is normal. We're in September. And we'll start breeding next month. So hopefully my breeding plans will, will have some new stuff that we've never hatched before. So I'm really excited about that. And... Uh, this is a female I'm really excited about because I just love her contrast there. Well, rotate device. She's just got really nice contrast and she's up to size. And she's eating really good for me. So we'll be putting that to, of course, a Tofino. And we're going to do a Tofino thing. Rotate device. Why are you saying that? This thing is a pain when I move it around. So we'll try that again. There you go. Now you can see it. Uh, we'll be putting her to him, and we'll be doing a lot of Tofino combinations. So that's certainly coming. And then uh, this guy is going to be breeding. So we'll be giving her one shot that we're going to take at the Super Black Pastel Bananas. Remember, like I said, we're going to take a shot. We're going to be a little different. If it fails, we'll just never do it again. So we're going to give that a go. This girl is up to size. Oh, my goodness. This is what happens to last night was speed night, so she's looking good. She shed, and she did that. So, and if you guys remember her, she was. And I need to get some more paper towels in here, so I, I used the last ones last night. So, I'll have to get that in a bit. Um, the Tofino in the light box, we will. You know, we're gonna start doing light box photographs, and the ones that we did that I put. Uh, whoo, sorry for shaking. That I did a video on, and that uh, I also put on my Facebook. They were just off my cell phone. I'd like to actually use the camera and do some really good light box photos and get some really good pictures because certain things are going to just probably breed. You know, the clits will probably be ready to breed. So, banana inchy. I do not have any banana inchies. But I'm hoping that girl's ready to breed. Just, so things here are just going really, really good. You know, this one will not be ready to breed, but you can see she's growing really well too. So... You know what? I love when they poop in their sheds. It's easy to pick up. It's like a shit in a sack is what I call it. It just makes things nice. This one, of course, also is doing good. That was one of that holdback GHI Moho I'm so proud of. It's looking fantastic. We kept that. 
we'll show you what we're keeping for us so far this year. And then, of course, Champagne Inchy Female. We kept her. Do, 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 do. You're about due for some new water. Have to get that cleaned out for you. I need to get cups in these. And then the GHI female who just tried to bite me. Why are we being that way? Come on. Boop. <laughs> Here we go. The GHI female who is cranky pants. But again, eating good. So those were holdbacks. Then, of course, we also are holding back the Paradox albino female. And then we are holding back one female pied. So that is what we have kept for ourselves so far this season. Plus a few other things we'll be keeping that I just haven't moved over here yet because they, they need to shed. So, yes. And GHI is awesome. I am a big fan of what it can do. Uh, we're going to put it through a lot of our collection. Another one, this snake is still acting very weird. So I want to show this one to you. She literally shed yesterday. And she's she's just still very dark. I'll show you her belly. Just a super dark, dark, dark snake. Now, if you look closely, so we can get to pick up on the camera here. You can see that the scales actually have some spreading. I mean, she looks she looks almost pregnant, but she's still been eating. I did not feed her this week because she was in shed, and uh, she almost like she need to take a big poop, but she didn't take a big poop when she shed. So I don't know what she's gonna do. I think she's I think she started. She reabsorbed is what I think she did, which is okay. If she did do that. We'll end up feeding her, uh, or not feeding her, <laughs> breeding her next season, and hopefully we'll have those eggs from her. So, my first two ball pythons. Well, that is a really easy answer. I'll show them to you. I still have them. This was one. My bumblebee male. And this guy's a little thin looking, only because he's recently taken to where he'll only eat mice. And that is one of my Xanthics. And that is a John Dog uh, bred Xanthic. So, right there. And that is my other one. So those are my first two ball pythons. I've still got them. I've kicked around selling that Xanthic about a hundred times because he doesn't really fit necessarily into any of my plans. But um, he's my first one. He's one I fell in love with, so I kind of keep, keep him. And my favorite morph is definitely Exanthic. There's no doubt about it. That's what we stick to. And uh, not stick to, but that's what we do a lot of. And we'll, not this coming season, we'll breed a, some of them like we always do. But the season after that, we'll have a ton. And, I mean, I have so many females I'm growing up. And, of course, Zeus, my big male, is ready to breed. So we're going to be able to rock it out in, in our Exanthic line. He does only want mice, and he didn't used to be that way. I don't know why he's doing that. This week, I fed him a mouse. When I checked on him, he tried to bite me. So I'm like, man, you want more? I threw in a little, like, rat pup. Nope, wouldn't take it. So, yeah. It is pretty much like Carl's Juniors and Hardy's. <laughs> that is the truth right there. <laughs> and we'll I don't think so. I mean... You know, I don't know how long he'll keep coaching. I, I think he's got as long as he wants here. It's you got these two sides of the coin every time around town. You know, and living in Manhattan, you get kind of a different feel for it. You got a lot of people who start pulling the oh, the game has moved on, and you know it, it's passed him by, and this and that, and it's time for a new coach, and yada yada yada. I look at it as this: we tried that once, and uh, it didn't work out so well. If anybody remembers the Ron Prince era. It was horrible. Ron Prince was terrible for us. So, uh, and then when Bill came back, we started going to bowl games again. Kansas State, in the middle of Kansas, is not the easiest place to recruit for football, to recruit huge, big talent, when you have Texas and Oklahoma in the conference trying to recruit the Florida schools. So, you know, Bill Snyder does a lot, but not as much. And he, he makes players disciplined, and he, he makes them better players. 
And he puts a lot of people in the NFL, too, if you look. I mean, there's guys who have been very successful. Uh, Terrence Newman, Darren Sproles, you know, Byron Pringle's probably going to catch on with the team. Uh, Lockett, he's still there. I mean, so you can go to K-State and you can be successful. Will Geary set in the NFL right now. There's a lineman for Chicago, Cody Whitehair. So you can go there and you can be successful, you know. But uh, most of those players improve while they're there dramatically. So I think he'll get to stay around for as long as he wants. So Dream sickles, man, they are expensive, and uh, I'm not going to be making them for a long time. The reason being is my pied morphs going towards yellow belly pie because that's what Question Girl really wants, and then probably Exanthic Pied or uh, Summa Pied. Probably, honestly, Summa Pied. We'll probably start working that route with some of our pied stuff here in the near future. So... Josh Freeman, he is not on a team, and uh, not that I know of. And I don't ever count him under the Bill Snyder area because that was one that was a Ron Prince guy. And, uh, yeah, so he didn't make it, but he was a Ron Prince K-Stater. So, you know, <laughs> not that he wasn't good and deserving to get there. He certainly was. But, uh, yeah, he's not. he wasn't really a Snyder guy, I don't think. So, all right, guys, anything else we want to see for snakes? If not, we'll probably uh, hop off of here because uh, then i got to go on to Patreon for a bit, and then we're going to go out to dinner for a bit. And then tomorrow is a day filled with snakes because, well, I'm going to watch the Viking game, right? Oh, Jordy Nelson. How can I forget Jordy Nelson? And uh, we're going to watch the Viking game, and then we're going to slide on down to a buddy's house and do some filming of his setup, and then we're going to kind of probably come back here and do some more filming work here. Here's the thing, too. I want to let you guys know. The Western Diamondback, we could probably go show you her. Here's the other thing I want to say, guys. Uh, stay tuned in over the next few weeks. Because there is, and I don't know what we're looking at, Candy. Uh, there is, I hope, a very, very large announcement coming from Olympus Reptiles in the next few weeks. Probably next 30 days. So stay tuned, because I, I, I want you to get a chance to be a part of that. I want you all to see that when we first do it. It's going to be awesome, and it's, if it works out, you know, it's going to be the beginning of what really is our future. You know, it, it'll, be, it'll be amazing. So I, I am really excited about that, and it's going to be, going to be great. So somebody said they wanted to see an Exanthic. Why don't we... Why don't we just do, you know what, I forgot to show you when we held back. That is Exanthic, because I put him in a different spot in the rack. So I'll show you that one. This is the, <laughs> it's all right, David. And this is the Exanthic here. Not the only, but one of the, of course, Super Pastel Exanthic. I just love that thing. Just love that thing. And somebody else asked to see your rattlesnake, so let's go take a look at the rattlesnake, and uh, then we will, or the western, not all of our rattlesnakes, and then I'm going to hop off here, go on to Patreon, and update them on that big announcement I was talking about with where it is actually at. So, we're getting closer to that all the time. It says live chat, I get confused also. What do you mean when it says live chat, you get confused? I don't know what's confusing about live chat. Uh, we're live now. So I can kind of hear y'all and see y'all. Oh, you're going to hear the sound. So. And let me get you some better light. Because right now we're on a night light system. And that ain't going to do. So there you go. Freshly fed. <laughs> just confiscated your shirt. <laughs> That's funny. And the candy there is something you can just look at. Right there. That is just an awesome, awesome thing. And I'll tell you, if you see it, the camera is really not picking up the true red that I'm seeing. Uh, there's, It's actually more red in person. Like the camera's washing it out some. Unfortunately, see if I can get a different color to maybe show it better. That did not. Let me get a white balance on this, maybe. 
Oh, hi, there you go. Still not picking it up. Man, try to balance the camera's lens again. And just by picking up on the light, I'm hoping to... But no, you're not getting the full red effect. But it is still, you can tell what it is, and it still looks really good. All right, guys, I'm going to hop off here and slide over to Patreon and say hi to those folks for a few. And we will catch you guys all very, very soon. All right.